Hey guys, I'm Alexis from Six Cell Design and today I'm going to show you how to do all the special stitches in Mosaic Crochet. These special stitches are what give you all of these curves and angles that you normally wouldn't get from standard Mosaic Crochet stitches. So almost all of my patterns have these special stitches, which I absolutely love. It's my favorite part of Mosaic Crochet and I can't wait to share my passion with you. So a lot of these patterns, all these angles. My most recent pattern too. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you the special stitches that I've developed specifically for my patterns. So if you're looking for information on how to do special stitches from another designer, I would recommend contacting them with any questions that you have because the icons and terms and techniques are likely to be a little bit different. I will have some timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to any stitches that you would like to learn more about. So this is a very highly requested video and I'm so excited to do this, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with some pretty basic stitches and we will move on to more complex ones and even some more obscure ones that you might not need very often. So the basic rules of mosaic crochet is every single stitch will get a stitch, either a single crochet or a double crochet. So if you're going to add two stitches into one stitch area, you're going to have to make up for it somewhere else. So for example, we're going to start with two DCs. So when you're adding two double crochets in the same stitch, which is what this number represents here, we're going to have to skip the first stitch, or if we're starting with two together, we're going to have to skip the next stitch to make up for the double. So that would look like you're skipping this first stitch section here and you're going to put the two DCs down here. So skip this and we're going to go down here. So here's one and two into the same hole. Oops, and we split. So now when we're adding two DCs into the first stitch, we're going to want to skip the second one to make up for that one. So that would look like this. The next stitch gets one, two, and this will be, and this will be the stitch that we're skipping. So your next stitch, depending on your chart, will go over here, either this stitch or this stitch. When you're reading the chart and you're crocheting left-handed and you're going to be reading this way, this is the skip, this is where you would put the two DCs, or it would start with two DCs and end with a skip. Now when you're going to be adding three DCs into the same stitch, you're going to want to skip two stitches in order to make up for the three. So when you're looking at it here, this is skipped, this is skipped, and you're going to put three DCs all the way over here. And when you're doing three, it's going to stretch. So you're going to want to do, some, do them a little bit looser. And that ends up looking like this. And I only have one pattern right now that has three together um, that makes a very specific shape. So you're pushing these over quite a bit. And then when you have this pulled over, you will see you're skipping back here. One, two, three. So three DCs in the same stitch, even though you're putting them all in this one stitch here, you're going to have three skipped in the back. So your next stitch would be directly here. So let's add a single crochet here and then go the other way. Now when you're reading the chart here and you're starting here, it's three and then we're skipping two. So let's put three into the next stitch right here. 
One, two, three. And to make sure you're going into the right spot, you're really going to want to look back here to know where you're going to put your next stitch. So this is skipped, this is skipped, this is skipped. So the next stitch you're going into, if you're putting a single crochet or any other stitch, will be all the way, count again, one, two, three. It's going to go in here, all the way over here. And this pushes the stitches all the way at a pretty extreme angle that way. So that's what those guys look like. These diagonal stitches are probably my most commonly used stitch. These make some pretty nice smooth angles. And we're going to start first with the diagonal down. So when you're reading this chart and you're reading it this way, this first stitch here is a skip, which will make a diagonal when you're doing the actual stitch. So the first step here is a skip, and then you're going into the DC and a single crochet directly above it. So that's kind of why I have the shape like this. So it's a skip down into double crochet, single crochet directly above it. So that looks like you're skipping this stitch, which is the very next stitch, and you're going to do double crochet down here. So skip, DC. And now your single crochet stitch is directly above that one. So it's back there. That's where the single goes. And that is what a diagonal down looks like. We'll do another one. Skip the next stitch, DC down here. And then your single crochet goes directly above it back here. So these diagonal stitches take up two stitches. Even though you're only putting one DC down here, you're also adding a single crochet up here. So this space back here is the one that you're skipping to make up for it. When you're reading this chart, and you're crocheting left-handed, you're going to be following the steps in reverse. So you would start with a single crochet, DC directly below it, and you're skipping the next stitch. When you're crocheting right-handed, it's a diagonal down, but when you're crocheting left-handed, it's actually a diagonal up for you. And the diagonal up stitch is the same, just in reverse. So now we're starting with a single crochet, double crochet directly below, skip the next stitch. I'm going to actually add a single here just to move it away from the other one. And so this is where we'll start, right here. So single crochet up here, double crochet down here, skipping this stitch. Single. Double goes all the way down here. And this one is skipped. So your next stitch in your chart would be here. So let's just add a single crochet here. And let's do another one. So single crochet, double crochet, skip. Down here. And skip this one. And your next stitch would go here. 
and the single crochet that I'm adding in here is not part of the stitch. This could actually end up being just about anything. This could be another diagonal, this could be a DC, but to finish this to show you how it ends up angling this way, and you're only skipping that one back here because there's two in this section here. Triangle stitches will be taking up three stitch sections and you always want to start a triangle with a skip and end it with a skip because it's one DC, single crochet directly above it, and then another DC back into this hole. You're making three stitches in the center section. So this and this needs to be skipped in order to accommodate for all three. So that will look like, skip this one, DC down here into this second one here. So we have one. And then the single crochet is going directly above it in the same stitch section. And then your DC is going to go all the way back here into this one, straight down. because there's a lot of stitches here it almost forces you to skip this because there's so much going on here so if you want to look at the back you're only skipping this one here so your next stitch goes here so let's just add a single crochet to finish this stitch so that's what a triangle would look like after you add a single crochet and we can do it again over here Tilt in the way. Okay. So we skip here, DC down here, single crochet up here, DC again back here, and skip this one. So let's skip and go down here with the DC. Single crochet goes directly above it, back here. And then your last DC is down here, back into the same hole directly below. And you're skipping just one stitch, this one right here. So your next stitch would go here based on what your chart says. But for now we're going to put a single crochet here so you can see what the stitch looks like all done. So here we have the two triangles. Let's now look at the rows below it. And that's what that looks like. And if you look back here, you're skipping this one. This gets three, and then you're skipping that one. And when you're reading this one left-handed, it's the same both ways. So you would start here, here, and then come back down here. And now we're getting into DC decrease stitches. And basically this stitch is an upside down triangle. That's all it really is. You're going to be taking two regular double crochet stitches and combining them into one so there's only one stitch at the top. So you're going to have three stitches but there's only one that's left at the top. The lines on the top of any of the D's in a chart represent a single crochet stitch that goes directly above where you will begin the DC decrease. So we are going to start with a single crochet stitch and the DC decrease will begin directly below it down here. So to do a decrease, yarn over, insert your hook directly below the stitch you just did, pull through one loop, pull through two loops, and stop. And now on here, we're skipping that middle stitch because we're adding another one on the next one. So we are skipping here and beginning again over here. So yarn over, insert your hook down here, go through one, yarn over, 
go through two and stop. Now we have three on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three to connect them into one stitch. And now we're adding a single crochet directly above this one. And that's a centered DC decrease. And as you can see, it's basically an upside down triangle. And we'll do another one. Let's add a single to start. Okay, so now we start with one single because the D has a line above it. So one, start your DC decrease directly below it, down here, yarn over into here. Pull through one loop, pull through two loops, stop. Skip this middle stitch, we're going into here. So yarn over and stick your hook in here, pull through one, pull through two, pull through all three to connect into one and add a single crochet above the stitch you just did right here. So you can see and that is what that one looks like. It's a weird one, so let's do another one. <laughs> Single crochet to start. Start your DC down here. So yarn over, go down here. Pull through one. Pull through two. Stop. Skip this next stitch here. Go down over here, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through one loop, pull through two loops, stop. We have three on our hook right now. Pull through all three and add your single crochet directly above this one back here. So one single right there. And there you go. This is a DC decrease that will only have two stitches. So instead of having a skip in the middle, they're side by side. And we're starting with a single crochet stitch for this one. So add your single crochet stitch. And start your DC decrease directly below it. Pull through one, pull through two, stop. Instead of skipping this middle one here like we did with the DC decrease centered, the next DC decrease is going in the next stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Go through one, go through two. Now we have three. Pull through all three. And that's it. That is how to do a DC decrease when you're starting with one single crochet. So there should be only one skipped back here. You're decreasing it into one, so that's why we have to add that one single crochet stitch to make up for the fact that now we're taking two and turning it into one. So let's do another one. Okay, we start with a single crochet. DC decrease starts directly below, yarn over directly below, down here, one, two, next one down here, yarn over, one, two, when you have three, <clears throat> pull through all three. And so these guys are on an angle this way. When you're doing this left-handed, it's going to be the opposite. So you're going to read it this way. You're going to start with a regular DC decrease, start your second DC decrease, and then you're finishing with a single crochet above. And that one 
will look like this for when you're crocheting right-handed. So you're going to start in the next stitch with your DC decrease. So pull through one, pull through two, yarn over, go to the next stitch. Pull through one, pull through two, stop when you have three, pull through all three. And then when the line is above the second one, we add that single crochet stitch above the second one, which is back here. And that finishes that stitch. I'm going to add a single crochet just to give it a little space from the other one so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to start here again. So yarn over, start your DC decrease down here. One, two, yarn over, next stitch. One, two, when you have three, pull through all three. And we're ending with a single crochet directly above this last one right here, which is back here. And that's how those look slanted that way. The double diagonal down or the multi diagonal down looks a little complicated, but it's actually very, very easy. This is basically splitting a diagonal stitch in half and adding double crochet stitches in between, making it lots of stitches that go on the same angle together. So you really only need to know what this symbol looks like here, because this is a skip, this is a DC, and then we have a DC and a single crochet directly above it. So for a double diagonal, we're skipping this stitch, DC down here, so we're starting on that angle, and then we're adding another DC next to it, and finish with a single crochet directly above it over here. So what that does is makes both of these stitches on an angle. We'll start again over here. So to show you again, skip this stitch, DC, DC, single crochet. So there's your first DC which will be pulled on an angle because you're skipping that one back there. Another DC next to it. And finish with a single crochet directly above that last stitch we just did. So now these guys are on, both of them are on an angle. If we want to do multi-diagonals Let's start again here. I'll show you what that looks like. When you have a skip and let's say two DCs here and then this stitch, we'll skip DC, DC, DC with a single crochet above it. <laughs> so skip DC down here. Another DC in the next stitch. And then we'll add this, which is another DC. That finishes with a single crochet above that one. And now we have 
three DCs that are on an angle. And again, when you're reading this left-handed, you're going to start with the single crochet, add a DC directly below it, and then move on to DC and skip, which is also what this looks like here. For a double diagonal up or a multi-diagonal up, it's the reverse of the one that we just did, we're going to start with a single crochet, add a double crochet directly below, and then we move on to a DC and finish it with a skip. And we can also have this same format here with many of these in between. So then all of those stitches will be on an angle. So we start with a single crochet, DC directly below it, and then your next one and the next stitch, DC. And we finish this stitch by skipping this third one here and it will pull everything on an angle. So let's add a single crochet here to show you what that looks like. So now they're all slanting that way. And you can see from the previous row all these guys are shifting that way. So let's do another one, start with a single crochet, double crochet directly below it, and then just like there, another DC, And let's add another DC. Pretend there's another X there. So we'll have three diagonals together. Skip the next stitch. Let's add a single here just to show you what that looks like. So now all three of those are together on an angle. And this is what a double looks like. And once again, when you're reading this left-handed, start with a skip, then add your DC and then DC single crochet directly above it to end that stitch. I also want to show you some hidden stitches, like ones in here after we did these diagonal stitches. You might have a chart that has an X, and if you're looking at it like this, you're not exactly sure where to put it. It's because it's hiding back here and all you need to do is move it over to get into that stitch. And really, almost any stitch can go back there. It could be a diagonal, could be a DC decrease, all depends on the chart that you have. But if you are looking here and you move this over, there's the stitch that you're going to be going into. Same with some of these stitches down here. When we have the angle going this way, just move that one over and you can add a stitch in there. Okay, so I have one more kind of oddball stitch for you. I don't have a printout of it because it's just, when you see a B in a chart, that represents a bobble stitch. And the reason why I have some bobble stitches in my patterns is because it makes the single crochet stitch, when it's on its own, it makes it pop out a little bit more. So instead of it getting lost in between other stitches, it'll help that one come out and be a little more noticeable. So when you're doing a bobble stitch, you're actually staying on the same row. This is the only time where you'll be actually putting a double crochet in a single crochet row. So the way that we do this without adding any stitches is yarn over, your next stitch will act like a DC decrease. So pull through one, pull through two, and stop. Yarn over, go through the same hole. And again, pull through one, pull through two, pull through all three. And that makes this stitch here quite bulky. So let's do another one. When you attach it here also you can see it kind of makes it real bulky here. You could also 
pop it out this way to make that pop out a little more too. And I'll add another row around it so you can see how that works out. So let's do another one as an example. Yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, yarn over again, go through the same hole, pull through one, pull through two, don't let it split, and then pull through three. Now we have a bunch. And as you can see, this is only making one stitch because we're joining it all together. So there's no skipping and there's no adding anything else. And now I'm going to show you what that looks like when you're adding the next row above it and what that does to those stitches. So to show you a bit of a comparison between what a stitch with a bobble looks like compared to a regular single crochet, I'm going to add a double here, a regular single in the next stitch, and then another double in the next one. Now we have this bobble stitch right here. As you can see at the top, here's one stitch, here's the second stitch, here's the third stitch. So we have bobble, regular bobble. So we can go through one of these up here. Just add one. And let's add a DC in here so you can see the difference between just having a single and having a bobble. So you can see with a regular single crochet stitch in between DCs, sometimes it will get a little lost. When you have them with bobble stitches, it could be really big or you can pop them back a little bit and just have them a little bit. So that is what that bobble stitch looks like. And that's about all the crazy stitches that I have for you today. This is all the ones that I've come up with and the ones that I use in a few of my patterns. Well, this looks like a mess, but when they're worked into patterns, I promise you they look really cool. I have lots more videos planned, so I hope you'll consider subscribing and thanks for watching. Oh, that's all avalanche of pillows. <laughs> Oh my 